This is Matt with Mal Express Radio. I have with me Mike of Devil Driver. How are you today, man? Doing great. How are you doing, bro? Doing great as well. I can't wait to see Devil Driver's return to the East Coast. I know you guys just wrapped up a lot of shows on the West with Cradle of Filth. How was how was that? A lot of fun. Uh, the Cradle Crew or the Cradle of Filth camp gets along very well with the Devil Driver camp. We all had a lot of fun. Everything was smooth. And after not being on tour for three and a half years, it felt amazing. I didn't know if I was still going to enjoy touring as much as I did before after being home for so long. But uh, as soon as I got out there, it, it didn't feel foreign to me or unfamiliar. You know, it was just, it just felt like another tour again. And uh, a lot more relaxed out on tour than I am at home for some reason. You know, there's responsibilities back home that uh, you couldn't do even if you even if you wanted to so there's that little bit of comfort floating over here all, all the time like I'm out here doing what I'm doing I'm making money and uh, playing music that's good enough for me I'm sure and I mean for a band like Devil Driver that's known for their non-stop touring how was it this the past three and a half years not being on the road in a way it was a kind of a nice break because we've always toured so much. You know, I like being home as much as I like being out on tour. You know, it's it's kind of nice to have two different lives. You know, I've got my touring life and I've got my home life. And when I'm at home, you know, I've got my fiance, my dog. You know, the, the beach is right there. I can go surfing whenever I want. I'm always sleeping in my own bed. But, you know, the alternate life going out on tour is just usually consists of me playing guitar all day in the dressing room, playing the show, and just hanging out with the guys and uh, trying to have fun. It's a nice blend to be able to do that. It keeps things interesting. I'm sure at this point in your career, you probably have like a good balance between touring and living your personal life. Yes. Back in the tw- my 20s, it was pretty much touring all the time you know we were out six to nine months out of every year and really did not spend much time at home but the band is in a position now where you know we get tour three or four months out of the year and i don't think it's going to affect our career you know where the first 20 years was about building you know and um of course we're always trying to build build the band up more but uh <laughs> we're older and going out nine months out of the year is just something that i don't see happening ever again and the new album deal with demons part two is set to be released on may 12th what can you tell fans about the upcoming album it's finally coming it's been a very very long time for us since we finished this we broke I think we spent a majority of 2017 writing it, recorded it in 2018. All the music was done, I believe, you know, the fourth quarter of 2018. Des did the vocals first quarter of 2019, mixed and mastered, I would say, by like April, May or June of 2019. And uh, so... It almost feels, I mean, for me, it feels old. It's, you know, just a lot of these songs are three, four years old for me already. And, uh, but uh, we got, luckily we did a double record this time. I think it was perfect timing for a pandemic to <laughs> be able to release something during lockdown and then have a second half to release uh, in, uh, you know, once things opened up again, we can actually get out on tour and support it. So it's, you know, it's not a completely different record than Dealing with Demons Volume 1. It's the, the second half, and it's not just... We didn't put our best songs all... Or what the ones that I feel are our best songs on all of them on the first record. You know, there's... We we spread it out through, through both. And uh, Volume 2 is not just a collection of B-sides from Volume 1. It's its, it's a own story. So do you feel like, is there, like, a connection between Deal with Demons Part 1 and 2, or? Yeah, because we recorded them all together. 
you know, when we were working on this record, I didn't know what songs were going to be on volume one and what songs were going to be on volume two. You know, we went on with 20 songs, we recorded them, and once they were mixed and mastered, we started figuring out which albums were going to go on which volume. And how is it right now bringing back John Miller on the bass along with their new drummer and guitarist? It's awesome. You know, I didn't... Miller hadn't been with us for 13 years. He and I have known each other since we were 18 years old and, you know, became very good friends very quickly. And... You know, I, I didn't know what to... Ex- really know what to expect, you know, going into a tour with John after, you know, uh, missing him for so long. But it it was awesome. You know, it's 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 painfully obvious that he is the right bass player for us and needs to be in Devil Driver. And with the new guys, you know, Alex was, Alex and, and Davier were just an absolute joy to have out on tour. They're cool people. They're extremely talented. Uh, they're not unfamiliar with the music industry or touring life, and they're built for it. They love it just as as much as the rest of us do. And, you know, Miller kept on telling me that while we were out on tour that he was having the best, the best time he's had in his whole life, and, you know, since he left the band. Do you feel like now the relationship's stronger with himself and the rest of your band because he had gotten sober again? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we're older and wiser. I think when you're in your 20s and your early 30s, you know, a lot of, you know, I, for lack of a better word, I think you're still just a stupid kid. You know, now that we're all grown up, um, we know how to conduct ourselves in a more mature manner. And, you know, we're not just going out and looking for whatever little bits of alcohol we can find and just getting hammered drunk every night. You know, we're, we go do our job. And uh, a lot of times, you know, we're just straight into the bus. And, uh, you know, we're at that point in our age where we got to leave the party in behind. And what do you see as far as plans for yourself and the rest of Devil Driver for 2023? in the works. I haven't seen a rowdy yet with Cradle of Filth for uh, different markets in the U.S. And that will probably be the last tour that we do in 2023. And the rest of the time, I'm just just going to spend working on a new Double Driver record. You know, just writing, get some ideas down. And um, once again, finally working with Miller again. You know, he lives in Maine, but Miller always had the ability to come up with some really cool riffs that almost everybody in the band would like immediately. He was, you know, he, he was a big part of the writing process when he was in the band, and uh, very looking forward to seeing what he comes up with and uh, working on some songs together for the first time in 13 years, even longer than that. And Dez has been pretty outspoken about his battle with COVID-19. Has that made the rest of you guys kind of take touring at a cautious approach? or we, You know, a little bit. We, uh, Dez and I decided not to do meet and greets on this last run. You know, he had such a hard time getting over COVID, and we both wanted to avoid the possibility of somebody getting sick on this tour. So, you know, we left that aspect out, but that was pretty much it, you know. You know, you get to the point, too, with this whole COVID thing. It's, you know, you got to go out there and live your life. And Des is not going to live his life in fear. I'm not going to do it. Nobody else in the band is going to do it. And, you know, you get to the point where it's like, yeah, it sucks that it's out there. You know, and uh, we're all fairly healthy individuals and with no, you know, underlying conditions that, uh, you know, if we were, one of us were to get COVID, I've already had it twice. And the second time was a walk in the park compared to the first time. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things that is what it is. The doctor did tell him that he doesn't want him flying quite yet, but um, I'm sure by the time 2024 comes around, he'll be back to the point where his doctor is going to give him an okay to fly overseas and uh, hopefully we'll head to Australia and Europe and Japan at some point. How do 
haven't taken out bands such as Suffocation, Death Angel, and Napalm Death. Uh, who do you hope to tour with that you haven't yet, and why? Mm, I'd like to do a, a tour of Carcass. Uh, their album, Heartwork, is still my favorite death metal record of all time, and we got to do 70,000 tons of metal with them many years ago, but uh, I think a Devil Driver Carcass tour would, would, would be a very cool thing. So out of Devil Driver's 12 albums, which includes Outlaws, Outlaws to the End, what is uh, one album you would suggest to a new fan and why? I would have to go with The Last Kind Words. Everyone, that seems to be a fan favorite and uh, definitely one of my favorite records. And I kind of feel like that was the point when we really proved to the record, or <laughs> sorry, proved to the world who we really were. And because the first Devil Driver record, which I was not a part of, to me, from my perspective as, you know, a, a friend of the band at the time, because I had known, you know, I didn't really know Des very well at that point, but we'd hung out a couple times, and but all the other guys in the band, we, you know, I'd been in a band, partied with them, hung out, you know, very consistently in college with those guys. So I saw the debut record as kind of a, a transition from Cold Chamber into Devil Driver, and on The Fury of Our Maker's Hand, we were kind of had just finally discovered what Devil Driver was going to be and then Luck Kind Words really solidified it. And that was the point when a lot of people that didn't want to like us started liking us. Um, and I still have fans to this day come up to me and be like, you know, I just I didn't want to like you guys because the whole Coal Chamber thing, you know, because new Metal back in the early 2000s for some reason became a dirty word and no one wanted to be affiliated with it and um, you know it does really we had to try hard to get away from that label you know and prove to people that Devil Driver was Devil Driver not Cold Chamber Part 2 and um, by the time we got the last kind words I feel looking back I feel that's when that moment happened you know what record I always thought deserved more recognition was actually Pray for Villains because I thought that was a really diverse album that had something to offer everyone. Yeah, I really liked that record. Um, and it, I could tell from talking to fans over the years that I hear more and more people, and you're a perfect example, where that's their favorite record. And to me, that... Uh, I think a lot of people were expecting Last Kind Words Part 2 when they heard Pray for Villains. And they... It, it, I feel like it took some time for people to get used to it and because they were expecting Last Kind Words Part 2. And I, I've always kind of compared it to when I was a kid, I was really into Marilyn Manson, and, you know, Antichrist Superstar was just in my CD player all the time. And when he came out with Mechanical Animals, I was a little taken back um, because I was expecting Antichrist Superstar Part 2, but he went in a completely different direction. Now, I don't think we mix things up that drastically with Pray for Villains, but, you know, just like Mechanical Animals took some time to grow on me, I feel that's how a lot of our fans were with Pray for Villains, where it's like, okay, this is not what I was expecting, but... Um, let me kind of revisit this in a different headspace than what I was expecting and listen to it from that point of view and all of a sudden it started to become a fan favorite over the years. Yeah, definitely. And I, From what I've heard, especially hearing from other band members too, I remember back then they were saying, oh, you just put the last kind of words and you put in this out. So I feel like that's maybe where the scrutiny is, is like you released an, a record that was so aggressive, but then you follow up with something that was more melodic. Yeah, and over, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of input on uh, on the fury of our maker's hand. You know, I was a new guy in the band, didn't want to push it too much. You know, I just wanted to kind of be there for support and, you know, work my way up the ranks, you know, and start to pay my dues in order to prove to the guys that I could be a primary songwriter. And then on Last Kind Words, I wrote a little bit more. And, you know, by the time we did Pray for 
villains, and I was very much into melodic metal back in those days. You know, I was listening to a lot of In Flames, Opeth, uh, At the Gates, you know, like the whole Scandinavian thing. And uh, that really influenced me a lot. And, I'm, you know, the way I write music has changed quite a bit from those days, but uh, that was the record where, you know, I started, the guys really started kind of taking their walls down and letting me uh, interject a lot more of my ideas into the songwriting. And, uh, you know, it ended up working out. And I kind of, I found a nice medium with the guys where I was like, okay, I'm going to, at that point in the, in the band, I was like, okay, now I, I kind of know what the guys like and what they don't like as far as the stuff that I'm bringing to the table. And so I felt, I felt very comfortable writing for that record with the guys and it was a lot of fun, but yeah, it came out, it definitely came out a lot more melodic and almost European sounding in the long run. Now you say that, I can totally see the European influences. Yep, they're definitely there. <laughs> so, since the band released their debut in 2003, you've faced you know, multiple lineup changes. Uh, you've fought through the COVID pandemic. What has really just been the driving force that has kept Devil Driver going? You know, uh, Dez is a highly motivated person and uh, doesn't like to fail. And having him at the helm of this band, you know, he, he, he keeps things moving along. He's definitely kept me busy, you know, either on tour or in the studio consistently for 20 years. And there's never been a point in this band's history or since my tenure in the band where I felt like hanging on, you know, hanging things up and saying I want to do something else, playing a different band, um, or just walk away from the music industry altogether. I've never, I've, my urge to stay in this industry is just as strong as it was 20 years ago. And so I think between that and, you know, having Des around, you know, we love doing it. And, uh, I just, it's really hard to imagine my life without Devil Driver. What I do. Hey, Mike, that's about all the questions I got from you. It's always a pleasure hearing from you as well as the Devil Driver camp. Really hoping that next tour with Cradle Law makes it to the East Coast because we miss you here in Massachusetts. Well, like I said, I haven't seen a routing yet, but if, uh, if we're not over there sometime toward the end of this year, I would expect us coming through that area early 2024. Yeah, I hope that you and the rest of the crew remain safe and healthy on tour. Yeah, 